Welcome to Off Duty, I'm Wendy Bounds. Both of our guests have fathers who left a lasting impact on the music industry. Danny Harrison is the son of Beatles member George Harrison, his longtime childhood friend Paul Hicks, the son of Holly's Tony Hicks. But both have struck out to chart their own course in music, and they're having real success with their collaborative, The New Number Two. They are joining us now from Los Angeles. Hi, guys. Now, I love the back <laughs> I love the waving, number one, and I love the backstory of how you came up with the title of your new album, which is debuting next week. It's called the fear of missing out. Where did that come from? Well, it was sort of an interesting concept. I mean, I think you, on the internet, people have been writing about it for a long time. It's just a sort of everyday thing that drives us all, really, and the social media networking, everything from, uh, you know, all social media sites to, to video conferencing to everything, you know, people suffering from the fear of missing out. We happened to come across it on a, on a menu in a restaurant, I think it was in Atlanta somewhere, and it just said, if you suffer from the fear of missing out, uh, please order the combination platter. And I just thought that was really funny because everyone, you know, is sort of suffering from this. Um, even us now, I'm, I'm having, uh, I can't see you, FOMO. You see, you can see us, but I can't <laughs> right. see you. So I'm having, <laughs> you, I'm having, what do you look like, FOMO? I'm you wondering. Know what we you're look like. you're, you're missing we out. I'm going to leave it to your imagination. Yeah. You'll, you'll have to watch later to figure it out. Did you order that platter? I'm just wondering. Did you, did you order the big sample platter? No. You did not. All right. You didn't appear you were missing out that much. You guys are Starbucks pick of the week next week. I think you have a Conan O'Brien appearance brewing. You're going to perform at Lollapalooza, the music festival, Friday, August 3rd. Now, this is a really eclectic sound, though. Blues, reggae, electronica. I think you've even sampled some stuff out there, like this YouTube video of the Cat Massage Lady song. Who's the best cat in the United States? It's you, Champer Damper. It's you. Who's the best Eventually, you know, you've seen enough TV and movies and adverts and things and internet clips where there is kind of a funny internet reference or, you know, pop reference to everything. And um, sometimes they just kind of they just kind of regurgitate themselves. And especially when you're working with, uh, you know, a bunch of people in the studio, everyone has these, you know, this really little pop references that just turn up. Also, you know, just so much influence from bands of like hip hop bands and samples and, you know, it's it's sort of our little take on it, really. So you guys have known each other, I think, since you were 11 years old. Uh, Paul, how did you two meet? Via some rel um, friends and relatives, we, um, we, we became friends, didn't we, really? Mm -hmm. through, and, um, yeah, and, and just we lived in the same town by absolute coincidence. We live across the street from each other. Our parents still live uh, yeah. next to each other. So, yeah, and, yeah we yeah, just, works like, pretty easy. both only children. He was at Abbey Road and um, worked there for such a long time that he ended up doing little bits of, you know, work here and there with my, with my old man. And... I think it was really good because my old man loved to having Paul around because, you know, he knew when he was working that it was someone that was a family friend and it was safe and, you know, because there's a lot of, you know, trust involved with, you know, engineering and masters and things like that. Back to this concept of your album, The Fear of Missing Out. Did it ever apply to you when it came to music, to either of you, having had dads who, you know, left such an impact in the industry? With all the sort of... Um, kids of, of people like that it's like you know you you since you're born you're surrounded by music well in our case and you know and I think you just whatever you grow up with just it's yeah, just a big part of your life yeah. and it's like as much as you sometimes try and do other things it just it just happens <laughs> in the music industry there's always sort of a, a essence of like living up to it and it's like it becomes more of a big thing. But I mean, if you look at acting, so many actors and actresses are the daughters and sons. Butchers, electricians. Yeah, the butchers, electricians, plumbers, you know, policemen, firemen. They're all doing the family business. Both of our dads made records. I mean, I learned how, I lived with a studio in my house. So, I mean, it was kind of, and my dad never had an engineer. So it was always like, here, you just stand there and press record. And, right. and then you'd be there three hours later going, can I go to bed now, you know? Um, <laughs> have to do some more drop-ins on the on the tape machine. Last quick question, guys. What's with all the lowercase letters strung together for the name of your band? How did you come up with that? 
back in 2001, I think I registered the domain name, and then I realized, well, you can't have the new number dot two dot com. Cause, <laughs> right. And then I realized that everything is going towards the sort of domain names or hashtags hadn't been invented in those days, but I could see where it was going. So I figured the sooner that you just put everything in lowercase, all in one word, the easier it will be for people to understand in the future.